the I'm gonna go ahead and hit the content warning again on this one. This is probably gonna be some chilling video. The sentencing trial for the Parkland shooter, Nicholas Cruz, wrapped up today. He is officially behind bars for life. I think Law and Crime even titled the video, They Threw Away the Key. This is one of the victim's moms testifying in court on the final day. And then has a bit of a ordeal with the shooter. Kirk Guttenberg, G-U-T-T-E-N-B-E-R-G. Thank you. And Fred Guttenberg, same spelling, G-U-T-T-E-N-B-E-R-G. Thank you, nice to see you both. Mrs. Guttenberg. Would you like to say something on behalf of your daughter, Jamie? Yes, I would. Please, Please go ahead. So yesterday, I put out a message that I wasn't going to speak. But after yesterday's events, I changed my mind. First, I want to thank you, Judge, for attempting to um, keep this courtroom from being a circus the state attorneys for all the hard work that they've done for way too many years, the victim's advocates in Eagles Haven who have supported us every single day um, beyond imagination, honestly. So, you. You shouldn't be sitting there with a mask on your face. It's disrespectful to be hiding your expressions under your mask when we as the families are sitting here talking to you. Lower down in your seat, hunched over, trying to make yourself look innocent when you're not. You took it off. Because you admitted what you did and everybody knows what you did. I felt the need today to remind this court and this entire country, who are the important people here? And that's Jamie, my daughter, and the other 16 victims that were murdered, as well as the 17. You may recognize her husband. He's that were injured. Now a, a countless thousands of mentally injured people. He is now a, a advocate for stricter gun laws. He has been appearing on a lot of cable news outlets. So Fred Guttenberg, you've probably seen him make different media appearances. From this massacre. They suffered the unimaginable. And as a reminder, there's no question about what happened. Guilt was admitted. I won't take the time to talk about you because as far as I'm concerned, you deserve zero acknowledgement. I need only to speak about the families who have endured this horror of what you did to our loved ones. Yesterday, the elected public defender said that nobody had to endure what this defense had to endure. Let me just tell everybody what our families have had to endure. For those of you who don't know, there were many rules and restrictions for our families. We were not to wear colors like orange for my daughter or advertising types of clothing. This is the, the final hearing in the Parkland shooter sentencing trial. This is the mom of one of the victims. He is, she spoke directly to Nicholas Cruz, and now she's, she's talking about the, the families. Or gear related to our loved ones. We weren't to have major reactions or facial expressions from what was being said. We had to be quiet. We didn't make a peep. We couldn't make any verbal sounds. We couldn't use our cell phones in the courtroom, even though the attorneys, the press, and everyone else could use theirs. We weren't to be speaking outside of this courtroom because we were unaware of where jurors might be and may run into somebody. The list goes on and on. And as a reminder, Mr. Weeks, and the rest of the defense attorneys, your client 
murdered our loved ones in cold blood, hunted them down, shot them over and over. Once again, I don't like the hatred that has been... I. And yeah, like, the woman apparently threw up a middle finger. It does look like she did it intentionally and like she wasn't just, like, scratching. It was one of those, like, covert kind of things. But it was kind of over that she was flipping the bird. I, these are public defenders who were put in an impossible position. So I show them the utmost sympathy because everyone deserves... A defense, even even mass murderers, and I'm sure the public defender's office is incredibly overworked and underpaid, and I can't imagine the stress that they were under in this situation, in this trial, and the judge has kind of been overbearing. The judge, I feel, was grandstanding and trying to make a name for herself. The family seemed to feel that the judge did a good job, and I sympathize with that. But from what I saw, and I watched hours of this because I don't know why, I have a morbid curiosity. We've covered it in parts here on the show, but I myself have watched hours of the coverage. until he knew he accomplished his goal and left him for dead with no remorse. In fact, well, he, he pled guilty. This has all just been about sentencing and stopped for a slurpee because he was thirsty after his rampage. I feel our families need to be recognized whether in the courtroom or watching from elsewhere. We sat through this entire trial respectfully. We tried not to react while videos of our loved ones were being shown to the jury. We tried not to react when the medical examiner described their horrific injuries. We tried not to react as we were verbally taken through the crime scene step by step. <sighs> Miss McNeil. RB, you said that about one of the judges and one of the many cases we've watched, but like, I didn't, I didn't get what you were talking about. Like she looked fine to me waved her hand at us during her closing arguments like this talking about these people and no matter what the verdict is that these people will always be suffering from what happened it was disrespectful and I'd like to tell you about these people we are sad hurt lonely empty and horrified yet we are strong caring and respectful. Each of us has done our share to try to do positive things every day, regardless of how our lives have been ruined. We have endured the unthinkable and the nonsense of this trial, including the blatant disrespect of this dissent, this defense team, and now Mr. Weeks. This is a club that nobody wants to be in, but I'm glad that my club is at least with these amazing people. Let me remind and everyone I'm again, fucking, uh, as other people have, who's important to you. I have the utmost respect for victims' advocates, uh, especially, like, I, I, I worked closely with a, a group when I was doing news that did, like, advocacy for children in courts. That is so fucking important. Children that are going to have to testify or have had to be taken away from their, their families and are going through this whole court process, they definitely need caring individuals there with them, walking them through this process. Victims advocates, like she's describing, do an amazing job and, and don't get enough praise and acknowledgement for the work they do. Jamie Guttenberg, my beautiful daughter, Nicholas Dwaret, Luke Hoyer, Joaquin Oliver, Gina Montalto, Elena Petty, Carol Loughran, Meadow Pollock, Alex Schachter, Peter Wang, Martin Duque, Carmen Shentra, Helena Ramsey, Alyssa al Hadef, Chris, Chris Hickson, Scott Beagle, and Aaron Feiss. Along with the 17 injured and thousands of others affected, I never want to hear the killer's name again. Let us remember the victims. And their legacy. Uh, uh. My daughter is Jamie Guttenberg. She is forever 14 and she is 
amazing still. And that's what I want people to remember. My friend RB, women aren't there for your approval or disapproval. And their their appearances uh shouldn't be gauged on on, on what you think. <laughs> Sorry, my friend. Sorry. Had to go a little woke on you there. Had to had to had to give you a little correction. <laughs> where's my where's my Jordan Peterson at? Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. Fuck Jordan Peterson, who was the one that threw out the the. Why do women wear rouge on their face? It's because your cheeks turn red naturally during sex, and they're trying. They're getting aroused. They're trying to to portray the arousal. <laughs> Why do women wear high heels? <laughs> <laughs> 